In February, India's Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle took off from Satish Dhawan Space Center in southern India, and it carried a record 104 satellites from six countries, including dozens of 10-pound cube satellites. They're part of an imaging system that provides climate monitoring and data for crop yield prediction, urban planning, and disaster response. But these tiny satellites also add to an ever-growing cloud of objects orbiting the Earth. The U.S. Air Force tracks 23,000 objects the size of a hardball. Most of them are derelict rocket parts, decommissioned spacecraft, or wreckage. Experts say there may be millions of hazardous splinters too small to track. Even a single paint flake traveling at thousands of miles an hour in orbit can wreck a delicate satellite. It all began in 1957 with the launch of Sputnik, the first artificial satellite to circle the Earth. The distinctive beep it radioed from orbit heralded the rush to surround our planet with spacecraft of every sort, size, and nationality. In the 60 years since, more than 5,200 satellites had been put up into orbit, and more than half of them are defunct but they're still up there. Meanwhile, driven by advances in miniaturization and dropping launch costs, hundreds of small satellites are set for launch in the months ahead, and many are no bigger than a loaf of bread. In addition, aerospace companies like OneWeb and SpaceX have filed plans for more than 18,000 new satellites in the next five years or so, representing about $175 billion worth of satellite manufacturing and launch services. Almost all of them will be concentrated in orbits ranging in altitude from about 200 miles to 1,200 miles an area already home to hundreds of indispensable satellites used for communications, weather forecasting, Earth observation, and navigation. The International Space Station and the Hubble Space Telescope both travel at about 17,000 miles per hour, and at such speeds, even an aluminum pellet one centimeter wide packs the kinetic equivalent of a 400-pound safe, moving at 60 miles per hour. Last year alone, orbiting debris was implicated in damage to six satellites at a cost in equipment and lost services that ran into the hundreds of millions of dollars. The nightmare scenario is called the Kessler Syndrome. Spacecraft collide, creating more debris, triggering chain reactions of more collisions, and producing ever more impassable barriers in orbit until Earth is imprisoned in a cloud of space junk. In 2009, an abandoned Russian military satellite slammed into an Iridium communications satellite with a closing speed of about 26,000 miles an hour. It was the first time an active satellite was destroyed by accidental impact. The company is now replacing its entire network with 72 more advanced satellites. And to avoid the risk of adding more debris, they are carefully deorbiting each older one as it is replaced so that it burns up harmlessly in the atmosphere. With so much at stake, a half dozen companies are experimenting with ways to better track debris and clean up the junkyard of space. California-based Leo Labs is building a worldwide network of radars for commercial tracking of space debris. In June, an Italian company called D-Orbit launched a CubeSat designed to automatically pull itself out of orbit when its mission is done. An aerospace company based in Singapore called Astroscale expects to test its first trash collecting satellite in the next year or so. And OneWeb is designing its $2 billion network of 720 internet satellites to be pulled from orbit when they reach the end of their working life. The goal of these new efforts? To make sure we don't run out of space, in space.